Um, I suppose, Dr. Dawkins, I would ask this to you. Is, is there a scientific basis for the concept of free will in human beings? And if not, is there a biological evolutionary reason why all of us believe we have free will? The late Christopher Hitchens, when asked, does he believe in free will, replied, I have no choice. <laughs> It, it's a question that I dread, actually, because I, 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 I don't have a very well thought out uh, view about it. I think that, I mean, I have a materialist view of the world. I think that, um, that things are determined in a rational way by antecedent events. Um, and so that commits me to the view that uh, when I think I have free will, when I think that I'm exercising free, free choice, I'm deluding myself, um, that, that I'm, my, my brain states are determined by physical events. And, and yet, that seems to contradict, to go against the very powerful subjective impression that we all have, um, that, we, that, we, that we do have, have uh, free will. Um, I think all I can do is, is recommend the works of my colleague Daniel Dennett on, on, on the subject, which are fascinating. And th there's a new book by another one of our colleagues, Sam Harris, on free will is coming out. But, yes. But I, I also have to agree that I think that I don't, I think there, everything I know about the world tells me that there's no such thing as free will. I, I, I just think we act, but, you know, but we act, but the world behaves as if there's free will, and so it doesn't make much difference. Just like um, the particles in, a, in, in, a, in the room, don't, we can discuss them statistically, and they behave as if they can do things that they're not being forced to do. It's just statistics. And, and we behave as if we have free will because we live in a very complex world where there's so many factors influencing any of our decisions that it, you, can't trace, you can't trace that free will down to its source. And so the difference between a world where we act as if we have free will or looks like we have free will and we really do, in my mind, is so minimal that it's a question for philosophers to worry about, but not, not me. Um, and maybe with that, uh, with that uh, we'll thank you very much. Thank you. Let me talk about freedom in our thinking. If naturalism is true, that is, that all that exists is the natural order, and there isn't anything that goes beyond man's experience in time, if naturalism is true, then the naturalist has no reason to believe his naturalism. You write that down and I'll explain why it's true. If naturalism is true, the naturalist has no reason to believe it. Has no reason to believe it. Because you see, naturalism says all of our thinking is just electrical chemical responses. All of our thinking is subject to the laws of chemistry and physics. Which is to say, all of our thinking is determined by the factors in the physical world or in the physical brain in the environment around us. All of our thinking is, in principle, predictable then, because it's just following the laws of nature. Uh, usually, more sophisticatedly put, the laws of physics and biology and chemistry and so forth. But the point is, human thinking is just the species of the physical world and its operation. Human thinking is just, it's on the same order, but not the same level of sophistication as weeds growing. And so if naturalism is true, then the person who's propounding it is propounding it. Why? Because his or her brain has required them by the laws of physics and chemistry and biology to say this sort of thing. It's not as though they have the freedom and self-awareness to think about different theories, evaluate evidence, and make a choice as to which is right or wrong. They just have to say whatever they have to say. And that's why the irony is that a naturalist would promote naturalism and try to tell people it's true. You should believe that and not supernaturalism. The answer is, if naturalism is true, so that your brain is just working on the laws of physics, then you have no reason to believe naturalism is true. It's just the laws of physics requiring you to say that. Which is just to say, if naturalism is true, there's no reason to say that naturalism is true. You're just forced to say that, just like I'm forced by the laws of physics to say the opposite. 
Unbelievers cannot even account for why we argue with each other then, can they? On their assumptions, there's no argument because there's no freedom to choose the truth over against error. There's just the laws of physics governing my brain to say and do whatever it does.